What's up, everyone? I'm Josiah Turner of Sideline Sports Report. And I'm joined today by Briante Weber, who just wrapped up his senior year at VCU. What's going on, man? No, I'm just chilling, man. I heard that, heard that. Uh, so speaking of your senior year, you know, you um, went through that fatal knee injury that caused you to miss the majority of the, the last part of the season anyway. Uh, how's everything going along with the rehab process? Yeah, it's a knee. It's a knee, so I mean, it's going to take some time and some patience. So right now, I'm just working through it, just grinding hard every day just to get back to where I was. Also, during that senior year, you were chasing that steals record. Yeah. You know, you were 11 short, um, you know, 12 away from passing the record and 11 from tying John Linehan. Uh, how much did that mean to you, you know, the fact that you weren't able to accomplish that because of the knee injury? You know, how much more did that hurt? Uh, I mean, it hurt. I mean, because just knowing I could put my name in history in the NCAA, but at the same time, I got my little piece of history here at VCU. Then I got, I mean, I'm third on the on the steals list. So if that's the case, then somebody should put an asterisk by my name. <laughs> just let me know, let them know that this record was mine. But I mean, like they say, God gave me a toughest battle to his strongest soldiers. So I'm just keep pushing. I heard that. I heard that. So uh, Shaka Smart, of course, you know, we know that he decided to part ways with VCU and take the job at Texas. Um, you know, due to the fact that you're going to be graduating this year and you're not one of the players that'll be coming back. Right. Uh, how do you feel about his decision? Do you feel like it was the right decision for him to make for himself? Coach Mark doesn't make wrong decisions. He made the right decision for himself, for his family, and for his coaching career. I mean, he came to VCU. VCU was on the verge. It was right there. It was teetering. He held him out. He, he got he got him to a, a, a face. Of, he, he got him a face in, in, in America. So mm -hmm. now, I mean, it was time for him to use this as a stepping stool as well, just as all the assistants that he brought under him that has a got coaching a head coaching job. So he just took on a new challenge and I was behind him hundred percent. I don't know about I mean other players, I mean they was kinda it was kinda wishy washy with it but mm -hmm. at the same time they gotta understand this is a business and you gotta you gotta do what what best suits you yeah, and, yeah. And, your, and your family. Yeah. And and all the older players understood it. I mean, it's just the way that VCU goes, I mean no coach stays here for Longer than that, I mean, because it's bigger, it's bigger obstacles out there that they want to face, mm -hmm. and I believe that he went to go take on a different obstacle at Texas, and and I know for a fact he's going to get that program back to where it used to be. Will Wade is coming in though, you know, and I'm sure you spent some time with him, a lot of time with him, actually during your freshman and sophomore year. Yeah. Uh, so you know, what can you tell us about Will Wade? You know, a few things maybe we don't know about him already. I mean, just like I said in my last interview, it was Coach Wade. He he had he has he had this piece of habit. Mm -hmm. Like Coach Smart and Coach Wade were kind of the two, the two main guys with forming havoc and and getting it where it was and where it was today. I mean, of course they have to make a little change to it <laughs> because it's no, it's no more Briante Weber in the havoc system. So I mean, Coach Wade is he's a he's a smart, intelligent coach and he knows how to get the best out of his players, such as Coach Smart. So Coach Wade is just, he's going to will, he's going to will. Going to will the team and, and the players to doing what what he says and have them buy into what he has, and he he's going to get the best out of the players that he has. Yeah, speaking of championships, you all uh, been in Atlanta ten a few seasons now, and you were able to get that first eight ten conference championship this year. You know, despite you missing the game and all, or or that tournament, I should say. You know, how how badly did you want to be out there with your team and celebrate with them, and you know, and be a part of it. I mean, I was a part of it, but I wasn't a part of it the way I wanted to be a part yeah. of it. So I had to be. I had to do something else to help my team win, and I took on the, the role of being a type player coach type. So I just did what I could to help everybody out and just giving them insight on what I see from the sideline. Mm -hmm. It's way different from sitting from the sideline and being on the court. So I just did what I could do to help them out. I mean, there wasn't no time for me to soak about being injured. It was a time for me to rejoice and be glad that my teammates did what, what, what was history in BCU in yeah. the first Atlanta team championship. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It was just something that it was, it was something that um, we set our minds on before the season, and it's something that we we got we got we got to accomplish. Yeah. So you got a little taste of what it's like to be a coach. So yeah. that's something that you may you know want to do sometime. Uh, uh yeah. I mean, co coaching is is it's all good and whatnot, but I'll probably cross that bridge when I, I can't I can't walk or I don't have legs. That's <laughs> the only time I'm. <laughs> I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel like I want to coach, but yeah. I mean, it was some. It was I got my coaching experience down pat, so I kind of know it, what it takes to be a coach now. Okay. Yeah, and during that NCAA tournament game, you all faced Ohio State, and D'Angelo Russell was going off. You know, he scored 28 points in that game, 
and you know it was really a huge reason why they ended up winning. How much did you want to be out there and guard him? You know, because I was I know I was saying to myself, Briante was out there. I know he'd be checking D'Angelo right now. Yeah, the crazy thing about it is everybody asked me about D'Angelo Russell, and mm -hmm. I said we wouldn't have been playing Ohio State if I was on if I was able to play. We would have never been the seventh seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't even ask, I usually don't even pay that question in your mind. I'll see D'Angelo in the next level. Yeah, I heard that, I heard that. So, uh, you know, so many great point guards in the NBA right now. You know, you got Chris Paul, the Stephen Curry, the Wes Brooks, Damian Lillard. You know, you can go on and on, Kyrie Irving. Which player, uh, point guard in particular, do you think would be the toughest for you to defend if you were to go head to head, head with him? <laughs> Wes Brooks. <laughs> Why you think that? Because he's, he's different. He's, just a, he's, not, he's, he's got a, a body of a shooting guard. Mm -hmm. And he got the speed of a running back. <laughs> and he got the body of a running back. So like <laughs> he just he's just an aggressive player on both ends of the floor and it's just that's just it's a hard one. I mean, all all of the NBA point guards are tough. They have their different different things that they can they they can do. So Westbrook definitely is probably the hardest out. Probably the one that I probably wouldn't wouldn't be able to check for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to say that, you know, or put down any of those other point guards, but is there one out there that you look at sometime, you know, watching on TV and be like, man, I like that. <laughs> I'm sure it's one every uh, now and then you look at it and say. I feel like that with, like, most of them. Okay. Actually, I'm not even going to front. I, <laughs> I kind of feel like, dang, if I was be able to do that, I would be able to do something different. Like, I mean, I checked Chris Paul before. I mean, he's... He's a strong point. Right? He's a smart point. Right? He thinks the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, I could, I mean, I could check him. Uh, Damian Lillard. He's just. It's, I've been watching his his type. His, like his film and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's not a tough guard. He's not outrageously fast. He's yeah. crafty, but I mean, just something I can feel like I can keep in front. Um, Derrick Rose is probably somebody that would also be on the same same end as Westbrook. Yeah, he just mm -hmm. he's just so. So explosive that I mean, ain't yeah. no telling, you know. If you don't. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm confident in myself. That's probably one of the things that makes me the person I am. Mm -hmm. is just having the confidence and and the tenacity and, and the tenacity just to do what I do. And I never know until I step in front of it. It's not. I'm never going to back down from a challenge. I'm going to take right. it on full full speed. And I, when I when I get there, I'll be able to show what I can do. Right. Right. Uh, you know, is there a player in particular that you looked up to as a child, you know, that you kind of pat your game behind and, you know, you grew up kind of wanting to be like? I mean, of course, I'm from the 757. Mm -hmm. I had to look up to Allen Iverson. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just something that, that we we breathe down yeah, there. That I, I, just, I just, that's just me. I just, that's AI. I wanted to be like AI mm -hmm. in every aspect of the game. And who's your favorite player right now? CP. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of draft wars out there, and I'm sure someone like yourself may be going up there to check them every now and then. Um, you know, how do you feel if you see your name not on some of those draft boards? You know, what, what comes to mind when you look at some of those? It's just the way my life been since I started playing basketball. Everybody underestimated, underestimated me and just what I'm capable of and what I can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that draft board thing means nothing. Like, like they say, they can have you ranked. In the top or whatever, you gotta have to prove to me that you can, that you're better than me. Yeah. So, no, that's that's good. I mean, that's that's good. I mean, I learned something from uh, Gary Harris last year. He told he told when he got drafted, he was supposed to be like a lot of pick. He mm -hmm. ended up being late first round. And he just told her, he told people he was like, don't go look at those draft boards because they don't mean nothing. They just they just tell you lies and stuff like that. So I'm like. I mean, that's something that I took him to advantage of me because I was in the draft boards up and down the whole thing. But I don't, I don't really buy into it. You gonna have, when we step on the court, you show me that you, 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 you that three star, you the four star, yeah, you, yeah. You, you all that. So mm -hmm. that's what I take from. Him. Okay. So would you be opposed to playing overseas if that opportunity presented itself and you weren't to go to the NBA for some reason? Oh uh, yeah, I would definitely love to go overseas, but it would, it would probably take me some time to get back over there because the way overseas is set up is like they kind of just put you, like you get off the plane and it's, it's full go. Uh, but if you had to market yourself right now to NBA GMs, what would you say about yourself that would, you know, put you in a position to be drafted? Uh, I mean, just want to get an all-around good teammate, a locker room guy, I mean, 
chemistry is probably one of the biggest things we're playing. I mean, that's what that's what we have here. You want to have a family type person on your team. I mean, behind the scenes, on the court, you already know I'm gonna give it 110 percent and give it everything I got every time I step on the court. Every every minute, every second, I'm gonna make the best out of every, every opportunity that you give me. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that I'm gonna also be a great teammate and, and, and a vocal leader, somebody that can. Be, it does, no matter me being a rookie or whatever, I'm just still gonna have my. I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to do as the, um, the vets do and, and just be be the the second voice after you know I'm a point guard, so I have to be vocal and I have to be able to to will people to do what I do. So that's just knowing that that's what I can do. Okay, okay, and uh, you know I know we were talking a little earlier about the fight. You know one last question I got for you. You know as far as Mayweather, he's so great defensively. And you also great defense on the basketball court. If you had to compare you two in some type of way in your respective sports, you know who would you say is the better defender? <laughs> I'm giving it to me. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm I'm a I'm a attacker on the defensive end. Mayweather's more of a avoider on the defensive end. So mm -hmm. he's avoiding punches and all that. He you know what I'm saying he's moving, he's weaving, he's bobbing. All right. Well, Y'all heard it here first. I'm here with Breonna Taylor Weber. Josiah Turner once again logging out from Sideline Sports Support.